Hi everyone. Um, today I was going to do some underglazing and I thought I'd kind of share um, my process. Um, some people had asked uh, to see how I do it and so I thought I'd share what I do. Um, if you hear dogs bark it's because I have three dogs and they if a leaf falls they'll bark. <laughs> so anyway um, so I painted this bowl and I was inspired by a watercolor that I saw. And so I decided that, you know, I'm doing some mugs. I, you know, if somebody wanted to buy a mug uh, that matched a bowl, I thought I may as well do some mugs, you know, to kind of match. So anyway, so that's, that's my inspiration for my, my mugs too. And then I just do, I don't do a whole lot on the outside. Sometimes I do. Just kind of depends. <laughs> but anyway, so so that's that was my inspiration for the mugs. Let me show you the mugs. Um, so here's a finished mug. Okay, these are hand built, as you can see. So I just took some flowers that were on the bowl and put them here. So now you see there's a, there's some blue down inside and that is going to get a little fish. You can see these little fish, but so the inside of the mugs will get a fish down in there and it'll be like a little surprise when you're drinking. <laughs> see a fish in the bottom of your mug. So that's what they'll get. So that's what that's what I'm going to do today. Now, um, so I hand build these and then I, I, I will bisque them and I, I paint my underglazes on bisque wear. Um, this is cone five. This is B mix with grog. Um, I've tried the B mix without grog and I like it cause it's smoother. But um, it doesn't like the hand build as well. It, it, it has a much higher tendency to crack. So, so I do like the bean mix with grog. Um, so, okay, so I'm going to start from the beginning. I got a blank mug left. I painted the other sets yesterday. And uh, here's a goldfish I painted. This was made from um, a jelly mold. And then I made a bottom. So, you know, there's my, my half my kitchen is in my pottery room. <laughs> I got bowls and mugs and plates everywhere. I mean, you know, there's so much uh, you can use from your kitchen when you're hand building, you know, just for inspiration and stuff. And then, real quick, I want to show you um, for a while, I was using my underglazes out of a, an ice cube tray because I paint like you would if kind of with watercolors. Um, I mix the different colors together. I add water. Um, you know, none of these colors that I have here. Let me show you what I did. If you can see. Okay. So this is, oh, I don't have, oh, let me get it. I got an empty one here. I can show you. This is what this is. I started out like this, okay? And this one's in the bag still, but um, you have to take you have to take these separators out. And then I drew a grid line with uh, Gorilla Glue under each one, put these back in, let it set, and that way they are sealed so that you can see that. So now they're sealed and I have like a watercolor set. And you know, they do um, dry out a little bit, but that doesn't, that doesn't bother me. Um, but it doesn't, you know, you can, you can see like the orange has seeped into the red just a tiny bit, but by putting um, a like colors together, it doesn't really matter. And, and I can put saran wrap over the top. If I'm going to be away for a long time, I'll put saran wrap over the top. Well, first I'll give it a mist spray of water, 
mist it with water, and then put saran wrap over the top and just leave it go. And it'll be fine. So, and I use mostly Amico velvet underglazes. Um, I do have a few that are um, speedball, but I can tell you <laughs> that um, I used the red speedball and I had a bunch of stuff stick together. <laughs> So, and then someone told me that Speedball has a slight flux in some of their underglazes. And Speedball glazes are great, don't get me wrong. They're a little bit less expensive than Amico Velvets. But um, I think for my, my purposes, I will stay with Amico because uh, some of the things I make, um, I stack them together. And I always paint on the bottom, too. So, you know, I'm tired of them st sticking to the shelf. Amica's, I've not had any problems with them sticking to the kiln shelf. But um, some of the speed bulbs have. So I think they have it as a, a little bit different um, recipe from, from what I've been told that, you know, so they, they flex a little bit more. So anyway, so, okay, so, yeah. So how cool is this thing? I can't wait to, I got one more I'm going to fill up and take to, um, where I teach at, um, and so I can keep one there and one at home. But a lot of these, like I said, a lot of these colors I just made up. Like, um, like this is avocado green, and this is chartreuse. This is a deep purple. But like this one, it was some, well, this one here, this turquoise, is this leftover from something. And so I just kept adding white to it and white to it um, until I got the color I wanted. So anyway, so okay, so let's let's get started here. So I'm gonna sand it down a little bit more. You want a nice smooth bottom so that when um, people are sending it on their counters, they're not scratching their counters up. Um, plus, oh, whoops. And plus you want a smooth surface to paint on. You just don't, you know, you don't want any rough edges. Somebody picks it up in their hand, you don't want it to, you know, you want it to be comfortable in their hand. And then you also want it to be comfortable when you're drinking out of it. And when you hand build, your mugs do go out around. They go out around just a little bit, but um, what I do is I set, I'll show you. I have just one of these plastic cups. I have about six of them. And then I set these down inside. And then but you, you gotta watch them because if you walk away and they start to dry, they'll shrink. And you got to constantly be coming back in and just slowly, you know, raising it up a little bit as they shrink. But so you have to keep your eye on them. <clears throat> I just uh, forgot one the other day, and it cracked. So, so anyway, so then you're gonna just want to sponge it off, <clears throat> get any clay dust off of there. So, I'll put this one here. Okay, so I think I'm going to start off with the orange. And I just leave, um, you know, a brush for each color because that way I'm not constantly rinsing out brushes and washing brushes, and it's just faster that way. So, and I, and I, I paint, you know, pretty, pretty loose. Um, and if I 
they're, they're too thick. I just add a little bit, spray a little bit of water in there. So, okay, so I'm going to do the two big flowers first. I'm going to come back with a little bit of red, and I've added some, I don't know if you can see, but i got a tray down here that I really watered down with the same color. And I'm going to go over the top. You really don't want to, you know, cover the whole flower. You want you want to see some of the orange underneath. <clears throat> I put the orange down first to kind of, um, because I want this red. This is actually um, a cinnamon red. It's the first time I've been using this cinnamon one. They were out of the bright red, so I got the. Velvet underglaze cinnamon. So we'll see how that fires. Kind of scary to do a whole set of um, a bowl and um, mugs and not have fired it before. But so okay, so kind of liking that. Um, just add a couple more. I think though. What I like about doing it on bisqueware is you can see what color is going to be, I think, better than if it's on greenware. And since I use um, a lot of water with my glazes, it's kind of uh, scary to add a bunch of water to a greenware piece because it can really start warping if you're not careful. You can see that. I gotta remember. I gotta remember. I got a camera here to <laughs> keep this in front of, so you can see it. See, so here's one, and there's the other one so far. And you know, if you mess up, it, it's easy just to you know sponge it off too. Whereas on greenware, um, you kind of have to scrape it off. And if you have a, a texture or something, then that, you know, it's not, not that, not good. So I'm going to add a few more streaks, I think, just to, of the orange. This is, uh, this is Amico's bright orange. So this ought to be, ought to fire really pretty. So, okay, so that's, that's part of it. I don't know if I have... Yeah, it's called, let's see here, I'm kind of organized, but I'm not. That's a bright, yeah, it's called bright orange. So, okay, so then I want, I want to do a purple center. So in one thing, so you can see on here, see how that purple has a glob on there? You don't want that because when you clear over it, uh, that will come through the clear. So you don't want that. And, you know, I still get, you know, other colors mixed in with the paint. But, you know, I just, you know, like from one color to another, you, you know, you get um, some contamination. And, uh, but that, does, that doesn't matter to me. I, let's do 
this one. And these, these actually left open overnight. I just sprayed them with water before I went to bed last night. Left all the brushes in there and There you go. Okay, so th yeah, those aren't too thick. You gotta be careful, you don't want them too thick because they will come through. Okay, so let's put some leaves on here. Stir up, this is like I said, now this one is, uh, this is straight avocado. Um, hmm. And I'll, I'll put one coat on and then I'll come back and add another coat of that so that it's a little bit darker. Let's go over and add a couple leaves to this one. Kind of try and, you know, see where you need some balance at. Okay, so now I think I'm going to do, I want to add a yellow one because I've got some yellow on my bowl. Um, so I think I'll put a yellow one right here. And you know, if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. I mean, I I don't really worry about it too much. <laughs> Let's see, a little bit of water. So now, when I'm done with these, um, I'll let this dry, and then I'll I'm going to go over it with um, a black outline, and I'll show you that. I'm done here. I don't want I don't want too much orange here. Just enough to outline it. Kind of reminds me of a daffodil. Um, I have I have one kind of daffodil that comes up, and it has. Uh, a peach, like a peachy orange center. I just love that. I think that is so pretty. Okay, so, and I think I'm going to do, I think on this one I did a, well, I did a red background there, but I, hmm. I think it's, I'll do a red. Let's just do a red here, huh? I think that's okay. I don't want it to run though. Okay, and then I'm going to do some purple flowers. Sometimes, um, you know, people always ask me where I get my inspiration from. And gosh, it's, it's all over. Like, sometimes I'll be searching through um, a furniture catalog and I'll see the print on a chair you know the fabric on a chair or a watercolor print or um, or bed sheets bed sheets uh, floral bed sheets some of those linen companies send you out catalogs and sometimes they have the coolest uh, let's see hmm, where am I gonna put that at I'll just put one right here, I think. Just stick them in there up at the top. I think I'll do, I definitely don't want just one. So I think I'm going to put one right here.
you have a question about anything, I don't like how that looks. If you have a question about anything, just leave it in the comments and I'll try to get back I'll try to get back to it. Um, as long as I see it. Some of my videos I thought I was getting the comments and then I went on there the other day and was looking at some of my YouTube channels because I'm I'm kinda tech savvy. I'm like I'm tech savvy enough to get myself in trouble. <laughs> but um, I'm not real real tech savvy. Um, <laughs> And you know, I used to be, but my gosh, everything seems to be getting, I don't know, out of control. <laughs> it's moving faster than my brain is, let's just say that. Anyway, um what else? Hmm. I think we ought to put another one here. What do you think? Let's put another one here. And um so anyway, so I saw that I had questions on some of my videos. That were like three, four, five, six months old, and oh my gosh, I, I had no idea. Okay, so so I had to apologize for that. I even my Facebook page, I don't know. Like sometimes I look on there, and it keeps saying I have messages. And then I go in there and look, and I don't see any messages. And then sometimes they're in a whole different spot. I don't know. So anyway, so if I don't answer you, just just ask me again or private message me or something if I don't, because I don't mean to ignore anybody. It's just I don't know. It's just hard to hard to figure out uh, some of this technical stuff. So okay, I'm more right brain. I, I I don't have I don't know. I'm better at this stuff than <laughs> the computer stuff. I I love making stuff. I'm just not very good at selling it. Like I'd rather just make it. <laughs> and you know, and even even on Etsy, I have an Etsy site, but I'm not very good at loading stuff on there because it's so hard to take all the photos and then weigh it and then measure it and then decide what it's going to cost. Um, and all the dimensions, well, I said the dimensions, and then upload it all. And then, you know, if I take it to a show, then I gotta take it all back down again. Um, and then start over with the new stuff. I don't know how some of these people load up a hundred. I think, you know, a lot of times Etsy's a lot easier if you have, you're loading up all of the same thing. Like, you know, if you load up just mugs and bowls, well then that's fairly easy because they're all basically the same dimension, the same weight, and you can just copy the description and, um, you know, onto each each new one. And but you're still taking pictures, but all the dimensions, the, the shipping weight, and all that's pretty much the same. So, but my stuff is all different. I don't I don't make I don't know. Everything I make is kind of different. I don't, so I don't know. Maybe I have to cut down on some of the variety and just uh so it's easier to load on Etsy. But then I get bored easily too. I don't like making the same thing over and over again. So I want to get this color up in this handle nice. So I'm just going to kind of put it up in there, but then I'm going to add just a little bit of water so it kind of seeps down and it just helps it, you know, it looks nicer and it uh, helps it adhere, you know, the handle. So see how that ran? It's not a, see that? Not a huge deal. You just wipe it off. Okay. Yeah, I've got all these, i got all this stuff to do. I don't know if you saw, i got these little lidded, cute little lidded jars i got to do today, too. I'm going to show this weekend, um, called the, it's the Cincinnati, Ohio, 
Clay Alliance. Um, it's their spring pottery fair. And hopefully, you know, we'll get we'll get some people out. I know a lot of people are still afraid of the the whole COVID thing. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how many people come out for it. But I think we'll have a good showing. So I had a little bit of orange there to the to the green handle. Just to make it a little more interesting, because sometimes when you use under glazes, you know, it can look flat. So, so okay, so there's there's what it looks like before the underline, and then um, does that need a? I think that hmm, I think that needs a leaf there. I think I got to add a leaf. That looks a little. Does not look like. Oh, that looks a little bare. So, like I said, so when these are done drying, I will immediately put the black liner glaze on. It's um, Amico's Black Velvet un um, Underglaze. And then I will dip them in a clear when it's dry. Or I'll brush it on very lib liberally. Um, these fan brushes from Mako are excellent. Um, they can they really fill up with. You can really fill these up with glaze. This is a number eight. And if you use like a fan brush, um, you can see that. I don't know. Um, it it just applies the clear so gently. That you don't I don't ever have smearing it never it never smears so then I'm gonna put um, oh wait, I gotta do the bottom so I'm gonna put I don't want you know like a whole busy thing on the bottom um, but I just like a little something so that you know when you pick up the mug and look at the bottom it's got something interesting to see down there and then I just chose some colors from my flowers a little bit of red just a little bit of purple so it's kind of all tied together So now I got, a, I got a little drip here, so I'll get that off of there. All right. So I'm gonna put the get, the, get that to dry. Yeah. So it's just doesn't look like much now, but so okay. My handle is just a um, a slab built handle. That I've uh, used a wooden rolling pin and made the texture and then I made my own um, stamp out of some clay oh, I got that here. oh it's a different one but anyway I just I make you know a bunch of clay stamps out of little pieces of clay I have left over so I have a whole box of different stamps and so okay so is that let's see if that's dry on the bottom no not quite yet but I'll get I'll tilt it a little bit and we'll go ahead and put the blue in the bottom for the, where the goldfish is going to go and um, that's a little thick so add a little bit of water to it there we go there we go and then I'm going to Actually, use a different brush with a little bit of water. I want it to look like water, so I don't want it too even. There we go. So now I've got blue in the bottom. I don't know if you can 
probably looks too dark there, but but that is this um, that is this blue here that I made. I don't know. I had some extra glaze. I just added but another blue that I added a bunch of water to. But it's what I was trying to copy was um, Amigo's turquoise. That is just a gorgeous color. I bought a little. I bought a little one. This is what I was trying to emulate is that turquoise because I wanted a big one and they were out of that. Um, that is a beautiful turquoise blue. So, okay. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll start. I think it looks pretty dry. It looks pretty dry, yeah. Okay, so. So let's see. Where's my, here's my pen. Here's what I use. Um, I have I use, I use these also. <clears throat> you can get these three in a pack for gosh I don't know is it less than ten dollars I know, but and these are nice because they have the the needle for the tip is inside. Can you see that? There you go. Is inside the cap so you never lose it. And and these are nice to use too. This is um this is a twenty a twenty gauge. But I don't know. I don't find I have quite as much control um, with the longer point here. So my my favorite thing to use is the Zyam. Let's see if I can get that back in there. There we go. And I don't ever empty these. Well, you know, when I refill them, obviously. But I store them upside down so that the glaze is always touching the tip and the tip never dries out. So, but I, I never, I never empty them out. And even when I store my um, under glazes, or most of my glazes, I store them upside down. Just make sure the lid's on tight. But that way, the glaze is down here, and it, it never dries out on the rims, and they're much easier to open. Okay, so, so here's the, so here's the Zion one that I like. Well, first I'll show you the. That's what it. That's what it is. And I use the uh, the yellow one, which should be the twenty. Yeah. So I use the the twenty gauge one. I've never used the other ones. But um, but yeah. So that's that's my favorite. And this is what it looks like. And and then I just have a um, a pin. I've lost some of their pins, <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I have a bunch of pins in there, so so then I just shake it up, and when I fill this with, um, I lost my. Here's what I use in here. It's Amigos. It's the uh, the jet black. To put in, but I I watered down slightly not you got to find the right consistency because if it's too watery it's going to run out if you turn it upside down and it starts to drip out it's too thin you don't want it to do that so and it does clog up sometimes but that's okay so okay so and you always want to pull away so that you're not you have a less chance of gumming up your your tip. It really does um, define it nicely. So let's see. What are we doing? So let's do the purple one first. And one thing I usually do first, I just thought I forgot. Let me show you real quick. Um, I saw a little, there's a little bump here. Just want to make sure that there's no, there's no chunks of underglaze anywhere. Because like I said, those will, those will pop through your clear. There's my dog barking. Ernie! Ernie is... 14 year old Yorkie and he's pretty 
He's probably about 70% uh, blind. <laughs> He can see he can see a little, but not not a lot, and he's mostly deaf too. So he knows my husband's home, trying to sleep because he worked third shift, and he wants to go see him. Okay, so. I might do some wheel videos too. I tried to do a live video a couple weeks ago and um, it, it didn't work out so well. <laughs> I set my wheel up outside and I thought it'd be nice to do some videos out there. So, but um, it was, I don't know, I, I was having problems with it and I couldn't see comments and, but I'm gonna try again. But right now I'm getting ready for a show this weekend. Did I say that? I think I did. The Cincinnati Clay Alliance, uh, which I belong to, um, is doing a, a pottery show this weekend at, in East Walnut Hills in Cincinnati. I believe the address is 1523 Madison Avenue. And um, it's outdoors in a parking lot. And um, it should be, if we're supposed to have really nice weather. So this leaf I drew here is going to end up being underneath that flower, which is fine. I might, I might show. Okay, let's see here. And I try to put my hand inside because you know, you got to be careful that you're not smudging. I've done that before too. You start smudging everything. Because once you've got the color on and then you're going over with the, with this liner, if you smudge it now and you try to erase the liner, the black lining, you're going to erase the color. And that is kind of a pain because um, it's hard to match it back up so let's see here it's hard to do it backwards usually I have it a lot of times I do them in my lap so because after I've been glazing for hours and hours and hours <laughs> when I'm trying to get ready for a show my back gets um, I don't know I get like cramps in my back So sometimes I'll stop and I'll go sit in a chair with a heating pad. <laughs> it's uh, it's not easy getting old. Okay, so there's that. So far, so good. Let's do this last one, and then I'll be done. So when these, so it was when these are, as soon as these dry, like maybe in a half an hour, um. I will just brush clear glaze on and I will put clear on the inside too and then like I said I'll put my um, I'll paint the fish and paint the clear on the inside then I'll drop the fish down and make sure he's make sure he's not on his back <laughs> make sure he's upright okay one more to go so once you've done a lot of them it it actually goes fairly quick um, I don't know. It feels like it's quick to me. People always say I glaze fast, but you know, when I've done a bowl and five other mugs, you kind of know, you know, what you're going for. If you were doing a, you know, the first one I did took a lot longer because, you know, I kept pulling it away and looking at it and trying to decide if I like the colors or not. And sometimes I always wonder if I should really do the black outline, but wow, it really, if you put one next to one that hasn't been outlined, it really does make up a difference. I hope you guys can see okay. I don't have a big fancy setup like some people do. Um, I use my cell phone. So, 
gosh, some of these um, artists, who they go, they go all out. They got big cameras and lights, and I'm just a small time operation. <laughs> If you like my videos, um, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to a thousand people. <laughs> I look at some of these um, artists and um, YouTubers and my gosh, you got like 30,000 subscribers. Like, holy moly. I, I don't ever, you know, think I'll ever get that far, but it'd be nice to get a thousand because that's what... Um, YouTube wants you to have and then you can put you know a few ads in your in your videos and you know it, you make a little bit of money off of it which is which is nice because you don't make a whole lot off of uh, well some people do they make a whole lot off of pot off of uh, pottery <laughs> so okay so enough chit chat right so here's there's the there's one that's finished, okay? And then just just to give you an idea, here's one that so this is what it would look like if I didn't outline it. So see the difference? I mean, you know, it just really makes it pop. So I really like I really like to outline on my Did I do the gotcha? Yeah, so I have to do this one next. You wanna let's see, I'll do I'll do one more because I got one more to do. Me as well, huh? I painted this one last night. Um, I can see this yellow flower is a little bit different than the other one, which is fine. They don't have to be exact, you know. I really enjoy the um, using my underglazes like watercolors. It, um, I don't know, it's just really relaxing to paint. And I try to keep things kind of whimsical and fun. I, I just, sometimes people say, well, what kind of flower is that? Or I say, I don't know. I don't know what kind of flower it is. It's just a colorful, pretty flower. <laughs> it's whatever kind of flower you want it to be. I felt like something was crawling on my leg. <laughs> I have, uh, like I said, I have three dogs. And I have a dog bed under my table. And so one of my, the 14-year-old, who's, where's Ernie? That's Ernie. He, uh, he's, he's, like I said, he's about 90% blind and can't hear very well. So he sleeps under there. I can hear him snoring sometimes. And then I have um, another Yorkie, who's actually his son. That's Archie, and he sleeps on the other side of the table. And then I have Sophie, who's, um, and he's a Yorkie too, obviously, if he's Ernie's son. But then I have Sophie, who is a Brittany, and she's about 10, 10 years old, I think. Um, and she's she's usually in the living room keeping her eye out for birds she is on the hunt for birds and squirrels and sometimes we get turkeys walking through the yard and deer the only the bad thing is is that I feed I feed all the birds I have you know I have several bird feeders out so I have to um, whenever they like right now I have well, I had a net, a nest by my front door, and those birds finally flew away and left. And then now I have another nest by my front door, and they're little eggs, so I'm not sure what, I'm not sure what they are. I just, um, they haven't got a real close look at the mama, but um, it's hard to keep her away. <clears throat> we haven't been able to use my front door for weeks because <laughs> we're afraid she'll you know get the birds and then when I saw him standing on the side of the nest the other day 
uh, we just blocked off the front door so she couldn't get to them. And, and I think those were red birds. But thank goodness they all they all flew away and they all made it. They all escaped Sophie, Sophie girl. It's amazing, you know, the instinct. You know, I didn't realize what an instinct that these dogs had. I just thought, you know, if you don't teach them how to hunt, they're not going to be hunters. But true, she uh, she's always on the hunt. And we, I can't. Well, there's a see, there's a chunk of yellow there. I gotta get that off of there. There we go. So let's see. Um, so yeah, so when we first got her and she started chasing all the squirrels, I'm like, no, and the birds, and good Lord. So hopefully these will all come out well in the kiln firing, because my last firing my bisque firing. I had quite a few bird baths that cracked. Oh gosh. And probably because I rushed them. They weren't, they probably weren't dry enough. I mean, I did a, a 12 hour preheat, so, but I think, I think um, since they were made in a mold, like I slump them down in a bowl to, you know, hold, hold the sides up. I think, um, it was too much stress on the sides and that's why they cracked. And then I had a couple other bowls cracked too that they were kind of experimental bowls anyway. I was doing some colored clay, which I'll have to do another video if they work out. I can see a little bit of red down here, which I really don't want. I may, if I can't get this off, I may, um, let me just sand it. We'll see. I don't, I don't. I don't want too much red there, but I think that's it. Oh, I gotta do the bottom. There we go. Alrighty, so mugs are done. I gotta come up with, uh, I got one, two, three. I've got some other mugs I have to do. I gotta come up with a design now. Think about what I'm gonna paint on here. I got the fish. And then I did, um, this is what I gotta paint next. I don't know if I'm gonna do a video on that or not. These mugs have a tree branch as a handle and a little, and a little, um, ladybug on top so that's what my next uh, thing is but anyway so thanks for watching like i said if you have any questions just let me know um and i'll come back and answer them answer them later thanks so much have a great day